Hallelujah. 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 A bunch of people sitting in darkness, their mind in darkness. But there's a great light here. Read that verse all over here, verse two. Read. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. You've been knowing that you have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's America. That's been America for, for us. Ever since we've been here. You, you could be walking down the street, you don't know when white folk may grab you and hang you. Or reach out, just stick something out of a car and shoot you. Say, oh yeah, it's a shadow of death. You don't know when. And you have been helped back. But when you see me, you see a great light. Though you've been dwelling here in this land of shadow of death, it's up on you that my light is shining. I'm shining into the dark recesses of your mind, showing you the word of truth. And now no man can take this from you. Well, what happened? Well, let's go to Jose 4 6 and see what happened to your mind. Why are you so destroyed? Who is such a joy? Why are you so destroyed in America and don't know you the chosen to be the ruler forever? And then even if you find out you the chosen, why aren't you able to do something about it? Now let's read why you have been unable to do anything about it. Jose 4, 6. Read. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, Yudhe I will also forget thy children. You forgot? So you as the children of slaves have been forgotten. Your father forgot Yahweh, so Yahweh forgot you, the children, until I come. You destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Tell me I proved my case. How long would you be without knowledge? How long would you be without knowledge? Genesis 15, 13. My lesson one is awesome. <laughs> I can do it different every time. <laughs> and it'd be so exciting the way I'm playing it around. Every time I do it, it listens to a draw for the song. Genesis 15, 13, read. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Now we see we would be here four hundred years under affliction. Walking in the light? No. Walking in darkness. Thinking we're walking in the light, but all the time walking in darkness. Destroyed for the lack of not chosen to be the ruler forever and don't know it. And then when you find out, you can't do anything about it until I come. Now, are you going to remain in this condition? Let's look at the next verse. 
14 and see if we're going to remain in this condition. Read. And also, that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. All right, now, here I am, here you are. You're sitting as a prey in the hand of the enemy. And your enemy is mighty. And you are captive in the hands of the mighty man. So the question is, can you, the so-called black people of America, who are the prey, be delivered? Isaiah 49, 24. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 24. Can you, the captive, the prey, be delivered from this condition? Read. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive? Delivered. And they sold you by law. So you became a lawful captive. Read the next verse. But thus saith the Lord Yudhe even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. Well, see, you, all you need is a savior. Now, you believed you had a savior, but you never got saved. You thought you had a savior, but you were never delivered. You were told about you have to die to get delivered from this white man. Hmm? Oh yeah, you, you, you no longer want to be free and delivered from the white man. You just look forward to dying. But see, I'm here to tell you, you don't have to die to go to heaven. You don't have to die to be delivered. Just face the truth. Accept the truth. Receive the true Savior. You, only one going to save you is somebody that look like you. Not somebody that does not. You got a choice now. It's up to you. See, the choice is up, it, it's yours. You have to choose. I have the power. Do you have the nerve? Do you have the nerve to accept the truth? Now, if you do have the nerve to accept me as the truth, then John 16, 13 tells you what I'll do for you. St. John chapter 16, verse 13, show you what I will do for you if you accept me as the truth. Hearing what I have to say should make you happy because no one else has shown you this. No one else tries to show you this. John 16, 13. Read. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Am I doing this? Then I have to be the one. Show you all things to come. And guiding you into all truth. For I am the spirit of truth. Which will set you free from the mighty and the terrible. 
and make you the ruler that you're chosen to be. And I come with the power to make you ruler forever. Now, let's see what else I'll do. Go back to Deuteronomy 7, 6. Now we come back. We completed a circle. Read Deuteronomy 7, 6. Read. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, Yudhe The Lord Yudhe thy God, hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Isn't this beautiful? You, the so-called black people of America, are a holy people. What is your purpose for living? What is your very purpose? Why are you born? You are born for Yahweh's use only. For Yahweh's use only. When you want to receive this blessing, Of being above all people that are on the face of the earth. See, it's your choice to be that or not. You don't have to be that. If you choose to be an individual, then you're going against what Yahweh chose you to do. The reason he gave you life is for his use. Only. That's the only reason you are alive. Is to be used by God alone and no one else. And he teaches us not to have any God besides him. Where? Exodus 23. 20 and 3. Let's see. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. This is exciting, isn't it? To find out why you are born. Why was I born, Mama? Well, see, tonight you find it out. Read. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Mm-hmm. And you're not to bow down to anything. Verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, Yudhe am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. You're not to bow down to anybody else but Yahweh. But there are women that seek to bow down to men. They got to have them a man that they can bow down to besides Yahweh. And you have men that have to have a woman that they can bow down to. It's, I'm not saying don't have a woman. I'm talking about bowing down <laughs> to them as if they are God right. who created. <laughs> That's the point. See, you're not supposed to make your creator jealous. Because <laughs> he'll get you sooner or later. If you make him jealous. I mean, he can do terrible things to you to make him jealous. I, I can laugh at hey, I'm having a ball because everything is done for my pleasure. Don't. They told you on television, don't fool Mother Nature. It's not nice to fool Mother Nature. Well, what do you think about God? 
Yahweh himself. If, if, if Mother Nature will send tornadoes in on you, I mean, what you think God is going to do when you make him upset? Don't make him jealous. Don't bow down to them. That's, that's a terrible thing to do. A terrible thing to do. Now, you want to be blessed? Know that Yahweh requires us to serve Him only. Now, ask yourself the question, who you serve? I'm not going to accuse you. Ask yourself. <laughs> Who are you serving? Now, if you're not giving your life, if your life is not a gift by you, hmm? if you're not out picking roses for Yahweh every day and taking to Him as a gift, hmm? with a pure heart then you can't see Yahweh oh you mean I gotta go back to no I'm talking spiritually you don't have to go find me no pink and white and red those and send your money and give it to a florist I'm talking about if you take a gift that Yahweh created and offered to him, what is your greatest gift? What is your greatest gift? Your life. After your life, huh? you become conscious and you know who your, your greatest gift is, Yahweh. After, after your greatest gift, Yahweh, then it's your what? Life. Now since Yahweh is the greatest gift and he gave you your life, then who do you owe your life to? Yahweh. Then why do you want to try to withhold from Yahweh that which he gave you? How much sense does it make to try to keep from giving to Yahweh that which he gave you in the first place? You want to act like it's your own until you get sick. Mm -hmm. When you get really sick, you don't act like it's yours. You go to Holly. If you know his name, you holler Yahweh. If you don't know his name, you holler, oh Lord, how much that? And then, and then you act like you know who you are too. On your child. You know I'm your child, Lord. You, you ought to stuff your side of the head. I mean, and we think we can fool God, too. You know, Lord. <laughs> I haven't been perfect, but I'm still your child. Here I am, Lord, down on his knee. Once more again. Like I hit the picture before ever let it pop and move, Lord. Ain't feeling too good today, Lord, but I want you to have mercy, Lord, and uh, look down on me, your child, Lord, and help me today, Lord, and let your healing hand go forth, Lord, today, and uh, Make me feel better first, and after you make me feel better, you can do what you want to do with other folks feeling bad, Lord. 
most people don't know the law until it's trouble time. <laughs> if the law you were calling on was real, he'd have to tell you. Some, look, why don't you ever call on me when you're happy and don't need anything? Every time I hear from you, you need something. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord, have mercy on your child today, Lord. I need some rent money, Lord. I need bills, folks are running me crazy, Lord, now. I need you right now, Lord. <laughs> See, my children and wife, you they can't laugh because they haven't seen it. They've been over here. They're like friends. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You heard You heard those kind of prayers, huh? Some of you made some of them. Some of y'all can plead so hard you have a large crime. <laughs> For his use. And if you let, if you give yourself to Yahweh, to you, he'll just bless you. All the things in your life that you desire become yours right away. See, remember, we have a rich treasury. Hmm? So though you just now waking up and walking out your darkness, there's a rich treasury waiting on you. You don't have to struggle no more. See, in my father's house, a many men, if it were not so, then I would have told you. Deuteronomy 7, 6. You are a holy people. Now, if you're not acting holy, you're out of character. You must live up to your character, which is holiness. Now, you don't get holy by coming down, getting on the altar, and snotting all over our coffee. <laughs> Foaming at the mouth and spitting all over my coffee. Now I'm going to say you a cleaning bill and you just carry on. Around. <laughs> I, I saw people do that all my life and they raise just as much hell when they finish. Get up, wipe all that snot off, and go back, back, go right out that door, raising their head. Talking about people. You see anybody like that? Just roll all over the church. Go home to chicken and ice cream and potato pie and be talking about everybody. <laughs> Leviticus 11, 44 tells you how to get hold of it. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44. For I am the Lord your God, God. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourself. See, you're not defiled by some spirit. Spirit don't smoke those cigarettes. You do. Spirit don't drink alcohol and beer. You do. Spirit don't, don't take drugs. You do. 
spirit doesn't lie, you lie. So if you're going to be straight, straighten yourself up. You don't go down to the altar and have somebody else hollering over you that's more crooked than a barrel of bait. You don't have nothing to be thankful for. You still a crook. You can only thank Yahweh if you stop being a crook. How many glad I teach you the truth? Just, anybody glad tonight that I'm just laying around here like it is? Back to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. You, black people of America, are holy people. But I am. I know oh, black people raising hell. Right. But you're still holy people. You can fall in the mud, but that doesn't make you mud. You fall in the mud, what do you do? Get up, wash yourself. Wash the mud off, and you still be clean people. Your problem is you fell in the mud for 400 years now. You've been walking in darkness for 400 years. I'm that great light, that true light that you need to show you out the way of darkness. I'm here to tell you you are a holy people. And Yahweh is your God. See that right there? The Lord thy God. Yahweh is your God. And Yahweh, your God, has chosen you to be a special people. maker of the sun, the maker of the moon, the maker of the stars, the maker of the air you breathe, chose you. The maker and creator of the food you eat chose you to be his special people. The creator of the water you drink chose you to be a special people for himself. 